So, you're building a PC and you don't know how much RAM to get. There's so many options, but as a cheap boy, you decide to buy a stick of 4 gigabytes. Now, how would that hold up nowadays? Alright, so as we all know, since about late November or early December, the PC market globally has gone to absolute crap. So a ton of people had to resort to buying cheaper parts in order to actually have a PC. Now, RAM is something that I think people tend to either overspend or underspend on. But the most important thing to pinpoint before buying any PC part is what kind of PC do you want to build. For example, if I want to make a small compact system for browsing the web and occasionally watching videos, I could spend way less on components as opposed to maybe a fully fledged workstation rig for heavy editing, rendering and so on. Yes, those are both the far opposite sides of the PC spectrum, but they are still common. However, the most common type of build falls in between. These tend to be multi-purpose rigs, used for gaming, editing, browsing the web, schoolwork, work in general, and a ton of other things. Most people building a PC will most likely be aiming to build something of this sort. However, as I've said, the current PC market is in shambles, which in turn has risen component prices to the sky. Thankfully though, it hasn't affected RAM prices all too much, but it has brought prices up a bit in this department too. So taking out three of the four sticks of RAM in my build leaves me with four gigabytes of RAM. Now before testing, I'll say that I'm not expecting much from four gigabytes of RAM. My build usually has 16 gigabytes at 2133 megahertz running in quad channel whereas in this test it'll run at the same speed but instead in single channel which basically strips us of a fat chunk of memory bandwidth so if you're new to pcs what i'm essentially saying is the more physical ram sticks the better while this might be a tad bit more expensive it will however offer you way more performance so two two gigabyte sticks in dual channel or four one gigabyte sticks in quad will likely perform better than one four gigabyte stick in single channel another thing i want to say is RAM can only do so much. It's got a certain role in your system. So if you pair 200 euro worth of RAM with a 50 euro CPU and a graphics card that you found in a history museum, you're most likely going to bottleneck the system and you won't be getting the performance you paid for and want it. Instead, do your research and spend the different parts of your budget on a balanced system. If you didn't get much of what I just said and you'd like me to drop a PC building guide, make sure to let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to deliver. So the PC I'm going to be using today is my personal rig which consists of a 6-core, 12-threaded i7-3930K at 4 GHz and a GTX 1070. Alright, so let's get down to testing. Okay, so the first on the list is Hitman 3. This game is definitely an intense one. I had it on a mix of high and max settings with V-Sync off. This is the first level of the game in Dubai, so keep in mind other levels might perform differently, seeing as each level of this game is practically a whole open world. The average frame rate was recorded as 121 frames per second, but honestly, from what I could tell, it seemed to stick to the 80s and 90s more so than 100 and over. On top of that, this gameplay was littered with stutters and occasional freezes, so if you can look past that, I'd say it's playable, when the stutters iron out of course. The extra RAM in this case would completely remove these issues. If you look at the RAM usage, you'll notice that it's more or less always running maxed so that's a big sign of a ram bottleneck all right next up we have red dead redemption 2 upon opening the game we got a warning that we didn't meet the ram requirement for this game but the absolute beast in me wanted to continue so i did and like the fighter this pc is it made it through the title screen like a champ then we were sent back to the desktop so no red dead redemption 2 with four gigs of ram after that bombshell, I decided to move on to a title that would once again restore my hopes in 4 gigs of RAM, and that game is BeamNG Drive. I tested it on the map you see here with max settings and VSync off, and performance was absolutely solid, racking in an average of 122 frames per second. This time it felt that way. Although there was a very slight bit of stutter at the start, the rest of this gameplay was smooth as butter. If this is a game you want to play, then 4 gigabytes of RAM isn't bad. However, keep in mind with this game, maps can vary wildly, so this seems to be a better case scenario. I decided to then move on to WWE 2K19, again with max settings, but this time I accidentally left VSync on. I expected that to cause lag and stutter, but no. We got the most playable game of this test so far. A silky smooth average of 60 FPS was perfect for me, and I think that would be fine for anyone wanting to have a good old time clapping the cheeks of world famous wrestlers. Wait, wait, no, that, that didn't sound right. Overall though, the game looked and performed great, so WWE 2K19 was a total success. Finally, we have a personal favourite of mine, 
Formula One 2018. I quickly hopped into a Grand Prix race and ended up driving as Sebastian Vettel at the Monaco Grand Prix. Please do excuse my absolutely atrocious performance here, as I was using a controller instead of a wheel, and I found it impossible to drive. It didn't help that I was driving at Monaco, which is a notoriously hard track to drive. Anyways, looking past my world-class skills on a controller, we got an alright experience here for the most part anyways. An average of 63 FPS remained the case for most of the track, but in the busy and tighter turns we got a huge drop in frames. If this were a game in which you wouldn't need fast reactions in, it would have been fine, but this isn't the case. So yeah, again, for the most part, it was fine, but it could definitely use more RAM. So overall, how did it do? Well, I did try some browsing on the web and watching YouTube, and that worked perfectly fine. But if you're trying to build a machine strictly for heavier tasks like gaming and editing, more RAM would be very beneficial. But again, your CPU and GPU matter a ton here too. So make sure you focus more on balancing your build with whatever budget you have, instead of spending the majority of it on one or two parts. But if you just watched this video for the fun experiment, thank you. And if you liked it, consider subscribing, as these are the kind of videos I hope to put out in future, along with some reviews and other tech related stuff. But to finally conclude, is 4GB of RAM usable in 2021? Yeah, it is. Obviously it all depends on what you want to do. Yes is indeed a broad answer, but nevertheless the right one in this case. And on that note, I hope you have a good night and I hope to see you next time.